Hello YouTube friends. I've got a lovely blank design board behind me and that's because I've been, uh, I have a quilt commission from one of the lovely viewers from to this channel. Thank you. And the remit was absolutely lovely. Uh, what this lady said was, make a quilt that you think would look nice in your house, Kate. So I'm going to really enjoy making this one. Now, I'm filming it now as I'm making it, but I'm not going to edit and put this video up until it's finished and until the customer's got it uh, so that she's the first person who sees it. But uh, obviously I'm going to be uh, collecting together all the bits and pieces of fabric and making this. So when you see this design board behind me on future videos, it'll be covered up with a big cloth because I want you to see it first. Now, when I, the, the design is a trip around the world block, that was the remit, we're going to use that block. And when I pulled all my fabrics, I thought, that's fine, I've got loads of fabrics in pinks and greens and reds and so on, which was the colours we discussed. But I was really bored with them all. I looked at them and thought, these are really dull. This is not at all what I want to uh, I want to work with, and this isn't the work I want to give to this lady. So I bought some new fabric. I'm so excited. Have you ever bought a jelly roll? Have you ever bought two jelly rolls? I splurged. I really wanted this quilt to be amazing, and I need two and a half inch strips. That's what I need, and that's what a jelly roll is. So once you open a jelly roll, it'll never look as beautiful again, will it? <laughs> so, but I am going to open it. I'm going to open it right now. So these are K Facet jelly rolls. Uh, there are, I think there are 40 designs uh, of everything in the K Facet range, which includes Brandon Mabley and Philip Jacobs. Those three people all designed for the K Facet range. So some of those people's designs may be in here. Uh, but there's, the reason why I bought it like this rather than in half yards or fat quarters or whatever is because I'll get much, much more variety. So come on, let's just open this, shall we? Oh, of course, there's an elastic band inside. So I take off the, the outer bit of ribbon like so. And then this will never look like this again. But we're going to do this because I want to start, make a start on this and start work on it now. So we open up this jelly roll then. And you can see, can't you, that what I've got here is the most amazing, delicious bunch of fabrics, all in really bold reds, and then the same here in blues and greens. That was that was what I wanted. Now there may not be quite enough fabric to make the whole quilt with this, but that's okay because I've been putting this project box together, and I've got some of my own bits and pieces of kefir set in here. Okay, fantastic. What a treat, <laughs> opening up this uh, this jelly roll together. Look at these beautiful fabrics. Let's look at a few of them individually. <laughs> so the way that this trip around the world block is going to work, oh, they're so good, aren't they? It's going to be in reds and greens and this bluey colour and some pinks. But it's not going to be, um, it's not going to have the same rigidity, the same design repeat, if you like. What am I trying to say? It's the, the, the theme of it is going to be reds and greens, but it's going to be a bit more mixed up than that. So I'm, uh, I've, I've got some extras in here if I need them, but the same designer. I'm not going to mix in any other designers with this at all. And I've drawn out the, the quilt plan in here uh, of what it is I'm going to be cutting. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'll get back to you in a minute when I've, um, well, it'll be a second for you, but it'll be all afternoon for me. When I've cut these fabrics how I want to, and uh, started to pair them up so that I can see that I've got the, the colour distribution that I want and the design that I want. So I'm going to do that now. And you know how much fun I'm going to have, don't you? A lot. <laughs> Excited about this one. So I'll make this, this project with you. You'll see it eventually uh, and it'll be uh, in parts 
just like the flying goose quilt was um not this easter but the easter before when i made that i think i made that in six parts didn't i so i'll make this in as many parts as it needs to be to be com uh, uh, a comprehensive look at how i'm making this quilt so what i'm doing now then i'm lining all these strips they're two and a half inches wide and width of fabric and i'm just lining up i, I don't know maybe six or so uh, at a time and i'm going to cut those into 16 inch strips for the next stage that I need, which is where I'm going to um, you know, put them onto my design board here in bundles of six, three reds, three greens, all completely different, so that then when I'm doing the next process, you can see what I'm going to do next. When you're sewing like this, lots and lots of straight bits you've got to keep an eye on your bobbin thread and make sure it doesn't run out and I've got maybe a few yards left I'll have to fill that in a minute So what I've done with all the strips, I've cut them all to length. They're two and a half inches wide and I've cut them to 16 inches long, which will give me a little bit of margin for error when I'm uh, cutting them up. Excuse me. Then I bun bundled them all up into six different colours in a run. Three of the red jelly roll and three of the green jelly roll and pin them together. So there's three of each here, all completely different. I'm not trying to um, match anything up. I just want to make sure I've got three on one side and three on the other, and that's how I'm sewing them. I'm stitching them all together like that, so that actually there will be big blocks of green and big blocks of red. Uh, that's intentional. So um, I've made uh, 25 of these, because for the size quilt that I'm making, 25, of this size will make the 60 inch square quilt that I want and so I've got a little system going now so they're all sitting next to me here or on my knee and I, I've got a, a method so they don't get mixed up so and then as soon as I've done these I've got them all done sewn into a six by six and as soon as I've finished doing this I'm going to press all the seams in uh, going one way <laughs> Uh, I've got a movie, I'm going to watch a film and I'm going to do that. And then, once all the seams are pressed in one direction, I'm going to sew this edge to this edge to make those tubes. And I'll have 25 tubes like that. Then I'm going to cut them at two and a half inches, but keeping very carefully keeping them together. I don't want this to be random. This is not a postage block quilt. This is a trip around the world quilt. And although the fabrics are all going to be different they will all still hang together because they're all from the same uh, family of colours and the same um, designs. So I'm going to get uh, get, up, get on and do that now. Uh, I've got, what have I got? One, two, three of those left to sew now. Yep, three. Uh, I've been going at this for ages and so, and I will carry on going at this for ages uh, and just filming little bits of it at a time. Just look at these colours, aren't they sumptuous? These amazing greens and um, these fantastic colours, they all work so brilliantly together. So I'm going to carry on doing this now. As I say, I've got a movie. I'm going to uh, put that on in a minute uh, and just stitch and press and stitch and cut and press and sew and, and press and cut and sew and measure. And it's going to be fantastic. But I'll let you see it when it's on the design board. Um, well, what's the next stage you're going to see? Uh, I'm going to unpick all the way around. I might film a little bit of that because that's quite tedious, which is why I need a few good movies. OK, guys, I'm going to get on and finish doing this then. Uh, as I say, I've only got three of these left to do. When you're working with pre-cuts like this, so easy, so easy. And so rewarding because the fabrics are beautiful.
Okay then, so uh, as I say, I've got a system so that as I'm um, chain piecing them through, I know exactly which one should be going uh, coming up next because uh, they're all following on one from the other. So like now I can cut that off. That's ready to have the other green one attached to it. And that's another finished bundle waiting to be pressed. So got the iron ready. Who's sitting on the ironing board? Of course. She's just getting it warm for me. Okay, so now I'm pressing all the seams in one direction on these blocks. And then once I've pressed it, and I always like to check the front, sometimes you can have a little bit, I call it a shelf, a little bit where the seam's not quite opened out. Then I'm going to fold that in half and I'm being very careful to fold it so that that bottom seam is straight. And in fact, all the seams line up because what I want to do when I sew the tube, I don't want to make it um, skewed so that um, when I cut the strips, they'll all be um, nice and even. So I'm just um, showing you these blocks here, big blocks of green, big blocks of red. I'm doing the voiceover for this weeks after I finished the quilt, so it's it's really weird to be back here with this um, <laughs> with this 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 footage here. Okay, so ironing all of these then and folding them really carefully, and then the next thing I do is sew that last seam so there's a tube, and then once that tube is done, I'm going to neaten the edge up here. On my cutting mat just neaten that edge up and then whatever size your strips are that's what width you need to cut your strips so um, if you were making this with a broader strip you if four inches you would cut this the strips to four inches smaller again the same now some people in the comments last time were saying that this is how you make a bar jello quilt by cutting the strips uh, different widths. Now I've never made those, I think they're very clever uh, and you get all sorts of beautiful effects that way but it's the same kind of idea, exactly the same. So round and round they go and then um, once they're all cut I was very careful to keep the six strips in their families so, they, so that um, they wouldn't get mixed up. So a nice accurate bit of cutting there and there's a little bit left over, not worried about that, just a tiny bit. They'll end up on Patreon postcards probably. And so then uh, they were all put into their little piles and all pinned together. Next time we'll see where we carry on from there.